We're speaking with Nissan Cha, who is the Director for Research at the Center for Internet and Society in Bangalore. Um, and we're going to talk about DML 2013. So, Nishan, you, you had mentioned your interest in the new kinds of, of political citizenship and, and participation, particularly by youth, um, that are arising from the, the widespread use of digital technologies. Uh, examples of that, that that seem particularly hopeful or useful uh, to you? Uh I don't really have immediate examples to give, but I think there is something strange that's happening uh, in countries like India, where for the longest time we've depended upon the state as the patron state, uh, as the state is something that's going to take care of us and be the central authority in all discourse around rights, around political equity and so on. But with this new peer-to-peer -peer network emerging, we're observing something that's new, which is that the state is no longer the central addressee of a lot of the new kind of political action that's emerging in the country. It can be one of the interlocutors, it can be one of the places that people go to, but this seem to be almost this resurgence of the community as a structure that supersedes networks of citizens who are supposed to be the ethical subjects of the state. So, in fact, just, just today somebody forwarded to me uh, this thing called the Gulabi Gang or the Pink Gang, which is a bunch of women uh, who have taken upon themselves, and they all wear pink saris in India, and they've taken upon themselves the task of uh, resolving issues of domestic violence, of gender abuse, of different kinds of discriminations against women, and they're not addressing the state and asking for more rights anymore. They seem to be coordinating it entirely through digital technologies, which they are using to orchestrate their activities. They seem to come together and mobilize uh, wherever there is. There seems to be a problem within their social reality. They just seem to organize and be solving it. So there is this increasing way by which the dependence on the state to actually solve social or political problems is diminishing. And that, that's really unprecedented in the country. What, what kind of digital media do they use to organize? I think right now in India, the cell phone is still the most powerful digital device that we have. I mean, just sheer statistics say that for every adult in the country, there are two cell phone connections in the country, uh, which means that it's the cheapest, the most affordable, and the easiest to use for a whole lot of people. Um, what, what do you see in regard to youth participation in this um, kind of a awakening um, civic use of, of media for for self-organizing, I guess, or, or for more grassroots organizing? I, I think I always find it difficult to talk about a monolithic youth in India because there are just so many different strata of it and they're just segregated across so many different caste and class barriers. But at least for the young metropolitan urban youth who speak English and can afford digital technologies, there seems to be a, a very strong platform to express discontent with the realities that they are looking for. And I guess like in any other place, the promissory note of the future is losing its currency for the young people in the country. Which means that more and more you have young people who are trying to come together not merely to express discontent, but actually take actions so that they can build the kind of futures they want to occupy. So there have been a series of things which have happened in the last decade or so. Uh, one of the most famous, famous ones uh, is called the Pink Underwear Campaign, uh, which is about a reaction to right-wing conservative political parties who were trying to beat up women who went to the pubs or who wore short clothes. It's because apparently those women were corrupting Indian culture. And when the state or the police or even traditional feminism couldn't account for uh, or protest against this kind of an abuse, you had a whole bunch of young people who used Facebook to start collecting pink underwear to send to the political party leaders as a sign of protest. And that became this incredible opportunity to talk about questions of gender inequity and discrimination in the city or the other or countries that we live in. And so these are the kinds of things which are coming up where you no longer have the youth thinking of itself as a consumer or even a prosumer, but actually an architect of its own future. And that's really promising. 
So as a, a member of the organizing committee, what are you looking forward to talking about and doing at DML 2013? Um, I think one of the most exciting things would be to hear from voices which are not always accounted for in the global discourse around youth and technology. A lot of the work that we have been doing has been in the global south where your digital native or your youth participant is not white, is not middle class, does not speak English, does not go to school, does not necessarily have smartphones and access to technologies which are ubiquitous and pervasive. And we always wonder saying, what do these kinds of digital natives do? Uh, what are the kinds of uh, social and material realities that they belong to? And I think it would be really exciting to put that in conversation with uh, a, a dialogue and a discourse which is coming from a very, very different part of the world in the United States and Europe. Thank you so much. And look forward to seeing you at DML 2013. No, pleasure.